Hello, everyone. Pavel Kosenko is speaking. Today, we will cover the second part of my three hour lecture, How to See Color. This time, we will focus on variability as the basis of color expressiveness. If you haven't watched the first part, I recommend starting with it. The link can be found in the comments section. This video is its continuation. So, in the previous video, I clearly demonstrated that your eyes are deceiving you. The relationship between what we see and how we perceive it is rather fragile. Hence, when working with color, we cannot be guided by such concepts as true color, lifelike color, etc. What does define a good color then? And what is a good color in general? Let's figure this out. The aesthetic perception of a person, be it visual, sound, tactile, or any other sensation, is based on the ability, and at the same time the need, to enjoy the nuances. Just like we savor fine food and fine wine, when we perceive color, our eye brain systems savor subtle color details too. The more such details are in the image, and the more developed the ability of a particular person to perceive them, the more interesting and pleasant it is to look at. Color details are shades and midtones. They arise where the color changes. The smoother the color change, the more color details we can observe and savor them, getting aesthetic pleasure. The ability of a color to change, or one might say vary, according to certain characteristics within certain limits, is called color variability. In painting, the term value is used to describe this. The Dictionary of Pictorial Terms interprets it as follows. Color value, from Latin valere, to have power to be worth, in the art of painting is a tonal nuance, a subtle difference of the same color in lightness. Value is achieved by the glaze technique. It allows you to achieve rich color relationships the subtlest nuances and elusive color transitions. So artists have an expression in relation to such painting, to paint with values. In fact, the color can vary not only in lightness, but also in other components. Which one exactly depends on a coordinate system used to describe the color? For mixing paints and working with digital images, it is convenient to use the HSB system where H is hue, color tone, S is saturation, B is brightness, lightness or brightness. In this coordinate system, color can vary in these three components. The first is variability in lightness. In this case, the color changes within certain limits only in its lightness component. Saturation and hue remain unchanged. When mixing paints, this variability is achieved by adding whitewash and soot. Good example is a shot of the famous photographer Rafael Milac. Notice how the color of the wall changes against the background of the main characters, smoothly and in a wide range from fairly light to almost black. In order to make color transitions invisible to the eye, a large, a very large number of color gradations is needed. That is why this photograph can be confidently called multicolored, that is, rich in values, although to an inexperienced eye, it may seem like bicolor. If you show this photo to an average person, then most often the first reaction is, who are these people? Why is a woman bald and a man is wearing heels? This perception can be called objective. It is difficult for the viewer to perceive the image aesthetically since he does not understand what is depicted here. A sophisticated aesthetic viewer with a developed perception of color sees first of all a variable green wall in this photograph and only then asks the question of what is depicted here. This perception can be called figurative. In order to learn to see color, it is important to perceive the world not only from the point of view of the objects of which it consists, but to attach importance to the color of these objects. And a good color is always a variable color. By the way, please note that the color in this photo is variable, also due to the lens vignetting, which, generally speaking, is considered a defect in optics. But for the color, it is the other way around, makes it more expressive. 
The second type of variability is saturation. In this case, the color changes within certain limits only in saturation. Lightness and shade remain unchanged. When mixing paints, this is achieved mainly by adding a gray paint similar in lightness to the most saturated paint. Take a still from the movie Zabriskie Point as an example. Notice how the orange color changes within the explosion from bright to earthy gray. Tens of thousands of intermediate shades form the main richness of color nuances in this shot. They are the ones that are interesting for the demanding eye, although the less experienced viewer will be quite satisfied with the deliberately obvious contrast of the two primary colors, red-orange and blue. There is also a variability in lightness in this frame, a blue sky, and just like in the previous example, Lens vignetting only benefits the color. The third type of variability is hue. In this case, the color changes within certain limits only by the color tone. Lightness and saturation remain unchanged. When mixing paints, this is achieved by smoothly adding one paint to another. Let's look at a photograph by Sergei Maximishin. Despite the fact that he himself does not like being called an artist, Emphasizing his specialization in photojournalism, I still think that Sergei is an artist with a capital letter, a photographer with an amazing vision of color. Look closely at how the turquoise and pink hues blend into each other behind the water pipes. Despite the fact that we see clear areas of each color, it is impossible to draw a clear border between them. This is achieved thanks to the ultimate smoothness of the gradient, that is, so many shades that the human eye ceases to see clear differences between adjacent ones. In real life, colors in photographs, paintings, and in movies rarely change in just one component. More often than not, they vary infinitely in all components at once, resulting in a complex, rich, and enjoyable color composition. Consider another example, a photograph of Elios Erwitt. I have experimented many times and asked different people the same question. What do you like in this picture in terms of color? Children and average untrained viewers most of the time point to the sail. It is this part of the photo that attracts their attention with its bright spots. Advanced photographers, colorists, and just aesthetes most often pay attention to the variable sky. Indeed, the sail is essentially bicolor, red and yellow. The variability within the corresponding stripes is not very high. The color in them practically does not change. But in order to achieve such smooth color transitions in the sky, tens of thousands of gradations were required. Let's see two more photos. Both are great, but they achieve color expression in different ways. On the first, thanks to only two highly saturated contrasting colors, inside which there is almost no color detail. The second, on the contrary, thanks to the huge number of half-tones and smooth gradations, that is, color variability. In fact, the photo on the left is bicolor. The photo on the right is almost infinitely multicolored. The three types of variability that we have looked at can be represented by the HSB color model. Let's recap. H is hue. S is saturation, and B is brightness. In English, the terms lightness and value are also used to denote the brightness component. They are used in slightly different ways from each other, but essentially similar color models. From the perception point of view, it is not important how we call lightness and what model to use. It is important that we can represent all colors potentially perceived by a person in the form of this cylinder. Its central axis is the grayscale range from black to white points. The further the color is from the central axis to the outer shell, the more saturated it is. And if you look at the cylinder from above, then we will see the familiar color wheel. This model is purely theoretical, as it contains colors that do not exist. For example, this color. It is absolutely black, the most intense yellow color. This color does not exist, or this one. It is completely white, the most saturated blue color. This color also does not exist, neither in nature nor in our imagination.
Generally speaking, all colors that are located on the top and bottom surface of the cylinder do not exist, except for the centers of these wheels, white and black points. All colors, when they are lightened or darkened, will sooner or later turn into either white or black. Meaning that if we talk about the full human color gamut as a model of perceived colors, then we will have to cut off some parts of it from this cylinder in a certain way. Here's what we get if we do it. To better understand this shape, we will cut a segment out of it in the same way as we cut a cake, and look inside. It was once the same cylinder of theoretical colors. After we cut off colors that do not exist in human perception, we get a model of the full human color gamut. The central axis of this model is the gradation of neutral shades from black, bottom, to white, top. The shades of black and white images lie on this axis. As the color moves away from the central axis, it gets saturated, which reaches maximum purity in the range, that is, purity from third-party shades. The purest colors are located on the outer shell of the figure. If we look at it from above, we will see how the color smoothly changes, and in 360 degrees it turns into itself again. Several useful observations can be made by looking at the full human color gamut. Here are some of them. First observation. Each color reaches its ultimate saturation, i.e. ultimate purity, at a different level of lightness. For example, the deepest blue is always dark. There is no light saturated blue color. Such a color will be light blue, weakly saturated. These colors are also called pastel colors. In the same way, for example, there is no dark bright yellow color. Such a color will inevitably be earthy, boggy. Second observation. If we make an extremely pure color lighter or darker, i.e. add white or black paint to it, then we will find ourselves in a zone of non-existent colors. In fact, in this case, we will move along the outer shell of our model. When darkening or lightening, the color will inevitably lose saturation, and in its range it will turn into absolutely unsaturated white, the central lower point on the axis of the figure, or black, the opposite upper point. Third observation. Saturation increase is a movement from the central axis of our model to its outer shell. What will happen with the color variability? That's right it will inevitably decrease. Surprisingly, this also works in the opposite direction. Lowering the saturation increases the variability of the color, so it pollutes the image, meaning it adds new color gradations. Generally speaking, this is one of the basic principles of working with color. When speaking about it, artists often use the proverb, more mud, more fuse. Let's consider a specific example. In this photograph, red is at the limit of its saturation. Over the entire area, it is approximately the same and almost does not change. Details in red are almost indistinguishable. But as soon as the overall saturation of the image is lowered, the red becomes variable. In doing so, you most likely have a feeling that the overall color of the photo has become too faded. Do not jump into the conclusions. If you look at this option for at least 5 seconds and then switch back to a more saturated one, it becomes clear that the original option was really oversaturated. When you work with saturation and choose between the two options, I always recommend comparing an image in this way. Look at the less saturated option for a while, then suddenly switch to the more saturated one. Usually, you will immediately see whether you overdid it with saturation or, on the contrary, did not do it enough. On this note, let's wrap up the topic of color variability. In the next part of the video course, we will talk about color harmony. Thank you for your attention, and see you soon.